Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about game monetization lessons from Magic the Gathering. And partially, one of the reasons I wanted to open my store was I did want to open it based on the MTG Finance model. And I'm not going to lie to you. I looked at what Rudy from Alpha Investment was doing. He's selling standard cards and buying reserve list collections. It seems like every week he has bought another large collection. Uh, this is the same model as my friend. This is not like a unique model that he developed. This is a model that is being used by a lot of people. It makes sense, right? Here's the, here's the reason that this model would work. If you have capital and you're making money from other businesses, then what you want to do is you want a place for people to sell you cards. Now, when they sell you a card, they're not selling you at full price. They understand that I'm taking it to a store and I'm probably going to lose 50% of the value just to get cash. I am interested in getting old magic collections and this is why the whole store concept is so appealing. I don't expect to make much money from it. And in fact, I may lose money, which I have it in my notebook that it is possible in year one, I lose around 40000 to $50,000, most of that being the salary of this person I would ha supposedly hire, right? So I have learned a lot of uh, monetization lessons from Magic the Gathering, and I'm going to tell you them. Although it can be very tedious for gamers to monetize their games and earn a good living from it, some people have done so and raked in millions of dollars. A good example of a game that has done this is Magic the Gathering. Since its debut in 1993, Magic the Gathering has raked in billions of dollars to its developers. And it's actually a very good model for how you would monetize your game without losing game appeal. So how does MTG make revenue? Whenever Hasbro releases its annual finances, MTG products are responsible for about 35% of the company's total profit annually. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot for one type of IP. Although holding tournaments and selling packs of cards accounts for a fair share of revenue, they are not the major reason why the game has been so successful over the years. There are fundamental aspects of the game which are the main reason and has turned a fan's love for the game into revenue. So whenever I see posts on Reddit or other places, my concept is I don't think those people are actually the ideal customer and I don't think those people are actually buying very much product. Most product is purchased out of Walmart and we see that when Walmart is given exclusive product lines like the colored booster packs. That's kind of a big deal. Like the magic mystery boxes. These are exclusive to Walmart and Walmart now can, they can carry master products, which again was supposedly limited. You know, that was supposedly a favor to these stores to keep them in business, but it's no longer that way as we've seen from iconic, which was a disaster in Masters 25, which I consider less of a disaster, but still not great. Although the game is more than 25 years old today, there are aspects which other gamers can look to incorporate. Uh, here is why Magic has made so much money and why you would even want to open the Magic Star. The Ethics. So the first rule of magic is that every player must play within the rules of the game. And this creates a, so unlike a Yu-Gi-Oh player where, you know, they're maybe they're younger, they tend to steal more. I hate to say this, but you go on YouTube and you can see these videos. Uh, there's a, there was a famous YouTuber called like G Hopper 85, like before, like when, we were all baby YouTubers, like he was a big Yugi tuber and he was a sexual predator. So I think Yu-Gi-Oh has many of the same issues we do, but Magic players are more ethical in general. Not all of them, but I would say 99% of them than Yu-Gi-Oh and they're much older than Pokemon players, right? 
and ethics is something that is valued by the community. So the product is visually appealing. From a marketing standpoint, you might ask, oh, why are the event decks this size? Why are the conspiracy boxes a different type of box format than a standard core set box? Well, it's to market to you. Uh, the artwork is very good. And competitive play. Uh, Magic is a pay to win game and winning a tournament only gets you addicted more to pay more money and that aspect can maximize how much money or how many cards you can sell because you kind of got them addicted to either opening packs or buying singles and making new decks. The game is incredibly dynamic and that's what I like about my current job. Uh, marketing, it's very dynamic. It changes every month. Uh, Facebook is facing, how can I say, privacy concerns. Therefore, the marketing on the back end is changing. The way I can target my, quote, audience is a lot different even a month ago than it is today. So I like that because it creates new and unique challenges. So the reason I'm opening a store is not to make money from it. Like it's not, I'm not trying to make money from my store. I'm trying to do what I think Rudy is doing. And Rudy has been very open about that. And I appreciate it because it confirms that that's the correct model. My friend has a store. I've mentioned it before many times. And the store doesn't really carry magic. Um, he uses the store to buy Zelda, Pokemon, he is a retro game collector. So the store is a place that people come to him to so he can buy games very cheap and then add it to his personal collection. And that's what he's done. Now, obviously, it's a physical location. And at one point, he was a WPN. He is not anymore because he said that it's not worth it because he, that's not what he does and he does not want to run tournaments. That's not what he's interested in. So I think that's the same model. If you look at Rudy's model, he opens a lot of cards. He keeps the ones that he wants, the massive pieces and the foil mythics and things of that nature. He sells the rest to break even or make a slight profit and then he repeats and does this again. On the meantime, he's buying graded reserve list cards, old collections, and he's keeping those. So that is the same model I want to have. Um, I'm not hoping to make a lot of money. In fact, I, for year one, I probably going to lose forty to fifty thousand dollars. I'm not going to recoup the salary of the person running. I, I went over the math um, to get uh, a bank loan. You have to go to the bank and give them a business proposal, which I did. And they approved the loan. And yeah, we have about, I have about until July 1st to actually get it up and running. At this moment in time, the website is not working. I have to put more time in the website. I've just been very busy with the buyout. But yeah, I don't think I can make money from this. And a lot of you might think that's silly. But is it? Is it silly for me to own hundreds of thousands of reserve list cards? I own just a fraction, a fraction of what Rudy has right now. But the only way for me to increase it drastically is to have a store, have people with old collections come to the store, buy those old collections, try to break even, and keep the cards that I want to keep. Uh, I will be quite honest with you. I did make several mistakes in selling my collections. I did have Power 9 at one time. And I sold it in 2015. Which that was right when the cards started spiking. And obviously I thought that was the height of it. Otherwise I would have kept it. But yeah, I am aggressively interested in buying old collections. Um, I have no interest in any new collections. If it can be reprinted, I have no interest in it. Maybe I sell it to make a little bit of money to keep the operations. But uh, other than that, it's reserve list cards are nothing for me. Uh, that, that's it. That's why I want. The ideal situation would be open the store, uh, two times a week, someone comes in with an old collection. I make them a fair offer on it, and 
hopefully the old collection is, you know, ideally 10,000 bulk cards from Arabian Nights. I would pay very good money for that collection. And that person would be very happy, maybe surprised at how much money they received. And I would have these cards that would keep spiking up and I would hold them and I would have no interest in selling those. So that's my plan. It's the Rudy Alpha investment plan. And it's partially why I decided to open store, but not because of Rudy, but because my friend had a similar model for retro games. He's Rudy's not the only one doing this. It's a very simple model. Retro games have been spiking up and up and up. So my friend has just been accumulating. He has stockpiles of sealed Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Red, uh, Pokemon Gold, Pokemon, not the original Pokemon Gold, although both are valuable. Both are incredibly valuable, as I found out later. He has sealed games. He has, I mean, he has probably one of the best Zelda collections you can imagine, like, uh, he has Final Fantasy, and that, that was a way, he's an energy trader, um, he makes quite a bit of money uh, doing what he does, and he enjoys video games. I enjoy magic. Anyway, bye guys.